Although groups such as ISIS and Al-Qaeda have lost notoriety in the Middle East, jihadism has not died. In Europe, attacks have decreased. However, in places such as Sri Lanka, people are still overcoming the shock of the last terrorist bombing. On Easter Sunday, more than 300 people lost their lives in a series of explosions in several churches and hotels. There are families who have lost, the whole family has lost. The father, mother, three children, then the mother, three children, and the children have lost their parents. In Rome, the new secretary of the Vatican's Interreligious Dialogue Department, Monsignor Indoniel Jenna Keratin, says the Holy See is worried about this situation. He points out it's been focusing its efforts for decades on improving relations with Islamic leaders. He says despite attacks such as those in Sri Lanka, there are clear signs that not everyone in the Muslim world embraces jihadism. The clearest example would be the document signed by Pope Francis and the Sunni Grand Imam of Al-Azhar, Imam el tayeb In this document, the Pope encourages us to enter into dialogue, interreligious as well as intra-religious dialogue, and dialogue between cultures. I think this document gives an orientation of getting out of tribalism, because this is a problem. Monsignor Indunil stresses sowing peace requires strong gestures. Despite the terror caused by the latest attacks, he notes in his country the people did not forget Pope Francis's message when he visited the island in 2015. He stressed the importance of reconciliation everywhere he visited. This message is still valid today as well. Reconciliation after the Civil War and reconciliation after the Easter attacks. He says for countries such as his, the Vatican promotes a strong policy of reconciliation, whereas others sow hatred. Therefore, a Vatican delegation will visit Sri Lanka in October. They'll continue to work to stop feelings of resentment terrorists have provoked among the Catholic population and leaders of other religions.